I'm Jeff Corman, the manager of the Maryland Department here at the Enoch Pratt Free Library, Maryland State Library. Today, I'm going to talk about the mysterious death of Edgar Allan Poe. For about 160 years now, people have been speculating about what really killed Poe. We know that he died here in Baltimore in October of 1849, but no one is really sure of the causes of his death. And there have been many theories over the years about what really happened that weekend. We know that Poe arrived in Baltimore on September 28th. He checked into a hotel and went out on the town because he had acquaintances here in Baltimore having lived here for a number of years. Then there's a period of days where he just disappears. And the next thing we know, he's found lying in the gutter here in a Baltimore street outside of a tavern, which was being used as a polling place that day. October 4th was an election day here in Baltimore. He was semi-conscious. And after being identified by some people, he was taken to a local hospital the Baltimore City uh, and Marine Hospital. When he arrived there, Poe was put under the care of a Dr. John Moran. After being there for a number of days and being tended to by Moran's wife, on the morning of October 7th, the Sunday morning, 1849, Poe awoke, he opened his eyes, looked up at the ceiling, said, Lord have mercy on my soul, and he died. Was 40 years old. Here at the Pratt Library, we're fortunate enough to have a few mementos of Poe's death. We keep them here in our vault. Among the memorabilia that we have from Poe's death, are two pieces that are kept in this box. A piece of Poe's coffin. Uh, people who study Poe and know about uh, his death and the years following know that he was originally buried in the back of the Westminster graveyard. And it wasn't until 1873 that he was reinterred under the monument that exists there today. In moving his coffin, a piece chipped off, and here in this box is an original piece of Edgar Allan Poe's coffin. In addition to that, here at Pratt, we hold locks of hair that were cut from the head of the individuals shortly after they died. It was common practice at that time, and uh, still common practice, I understand, in many families. What we have in this frame, both Edgar and a lock of his wife, Virginia's hair. Virginia's, of course, is the more voluminous, it's the curly hair. This is Edgar's hair, right up here, the straight hair. Well, we've been to the library's vault. Now I'm standing in the Special Collections Department reading room here at the library where I have with me a few really important pieces of Poe's life. In my hand right now is the letter that uh, Elmira Shelton wrote to Maria Clem in September of 1849. This is the actual letter where she's introducing herself again to Maria because she had known her or had been acquainted with her much earlier in her life and talks to her about her coming to live with them and how welcome she is and how wonderful life will be from them. It's a rather lengthy letter. Here's the other side. And when Maria received this letter, of course, she was thrilled and anxious for Edgar to come and get her from the Bronx where she was living and bring her down to Richmond. This other letter that we have here uh, in our special collections department 
is among many of the letters uh, from Poe and from Poe's family that were written during his lifetime. This is the letter that Dr. Moran, the attending physician at the Baltimore City and Marine Hospital, wrote to Maria Clem, oh, about a month after his death. It's actually dated November 15th, 1849. Mrs. Clem apparently had contacted Dr. Moran to ask him about Poe's last days. And he did take quite a bit of time to write to her and explain, again, another lengthy letter that discussed his last hours. And this letter was used by Moran to later actually go out on the lecture circuit and talk about Poe's last days as his being his attending physician. There are many possible explanations as to how Poe died, but there is one thing that we do know. We don't know. And after all of these years, isn't it fitting that the man who gave us so much mystery died in a mysterious way here in Baltimore?